Hey everybody, Arnaldo Offman here of Gear It First. I am here with the amazing and life-saving right now, <laughs> Adam from Max Laser. Uh, okay, I can see now on YouTube it says that the stream is good. Guys, we're having some issues, uh, and I would say it's on my end, but I tried Facebook Live, everything was working great. I streamed earlier today, I kid you not, as soon as 9 p.m. rolled, it tanked. It wouldn't even upload. So we don't know what's going on. Uh, my ISP said they're not throttling it. YouTube is obviously not throttling it. Uh, they just switched everything out as far as the modem. I actually bypassed the router, connected straight to the modem. Nothing. So we don't know what's going on. So we had to switch over to Adam. Um, anyhow, um, Adam, real quick, if you can tell everybody a little bit about what you do and or what you do for X-Laser and what X-Laser does for the industry. Yeah, my name is Adam. I'm here with X-Laser. Uh, X-Laser as a company focuses on one thing in particular, and that thing is helping people who are new to laser get into laser. We don't always make the top end race cars. Uh, we want to make sure that we have the, the Toyotas, the Fords, the Chevys, the workhorse products that everyone's going to be able to get into, work with, with a minimum amount of investment in time and money, and then make their money back on. That's the key thing about the company. The company's been around since 2007. I came on in 2009. Uh, throughout the years, I started doing the product development side of things, getting a little further along. And then uh, in March of last year, I wound up uh, taking over the company from Dan, the previous owner. Just about everyone has heard of Dan and uh, X Laser. He's done a lot for the DJ community. Uh, if mm -hmm. you've been to DJ Expo, you've met Dan. So uh, we're real, real pleased with this. Uh, whole side of things. We love the DJ market. This company originally started before it was dealing with lasers. It was a mobile DJ company. Uh, so we're real pumped about the audience. Awesome. Uh, real quick, Adam, uh, before we continue, can you, you should be able to see on the top of your Zoom where it says speaker view. Uh, if you click that or it says gallery view, if you can click that so it says speaker view. So that way we're both the same size squared. Somebody wants to actually see you larger because they like your pretty background. <laughs> Let's see, large active speaker. Yeah, just click on it. Uh, cl uh, click it until it says speaker view. Speaker view, huh? Oh no, this is where everyone discovers that I'm actually terrible at computers. <laughs> I can draft, I can engineer. It's great stuff, but when it comes to the computer stuff, I've got to show small active speaker video. I've got uh, hide thumbnail video. And you're not sharing the screen, right? Okay, if not, it is what it is, guys. We just kind of slapped them into this at the very last minute because we're, we're trying to make uh, magic work. But if anything, you can also share your screen in case there's anything like photos and videos that you want to share with them. So, I mean, obviously today we want to talk about making money with lasers. Um, you know, and, and I've pushed this to DJs before, Adam, and not just DJs, but even people that are entering the laser field or lighting design field is that you, you can't just buy something and expect it to make money for you right away. You have to know what you're getting into and... You know, as far as you have to do the proper research, you have to make sure that you're legit. And we're going to, guys, as far as all the questions about laser safety and all that, we're doing another live stream on that. Today, we're going to talk about making money with lasers. I did want to bring that out. Uh, but also, more importantly, understanding some of the different things that you can do with lasers. I just did a 4th of July event yesterday because it was 4th of July. And they wanted to do some laser animations because they saw me do it for another event before where they wanted a gobo last minute. I'm like, there's, I don't have time to get a gobo made. There's no way. It's like a couple days prior. So we used lasers and it, it turned out awesome. I mean, it was great. So we, uh, th they said, well, can you do it for the 4th of July? I'm like, yeah, no problem. The band comes in, they're setting up and they're like, what are you setting up? I'm setting up lasers. They immediately imagine pew, 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 you know? And they're like, well, we don't want it to look too crazy. It's not a rave. I'm like, it's, it's not that kind of thing. So, you know, with that being said, if a lot of the end users, not us end users, but our clients, the actual end users, if that's what they imagine, that means to me that there's a lot of untapped opportunity of making more money for lasers than just traditional laser shows as we, you know, in the entertainment field see it. Uh, but first, let's talk about good, you know, good design elements to be able to get the most out of the lease. I've seen some designers do some wicked things with just two lasers or even just one. Uh, so then when you have multiple ones, I mean, it really blows up the experience. So I know you have some tip for the audience. So let's get straight to it. What's your first tip for good design elements? Yeah. So one of the, one of the most basic things that we see is sometimes people will get a laser and they won't really spend any time working with it at all in their shop or anything like that. And then they end up getting on site. 
They're trying to figure it out on site, and then they end up with not, not the greatest looks to the audience. Um, one of the key things, and, and we're gonna go through a couple of these, but one of the mm -hmm. prime concepts here is lasers are actually directional, and a lot of people really don't expect that. But uh, I've got a little laser pointer here and a uh, bit of canned haze um, from our friends at Fantasy FX. So this is a, a good demonstrator. When the laser's coming towards you, I've got no haze in the air whatsoever. But if I go ahead and do this right by the camera, you can see that beam. Um, even though there's no haze in the air whatsoever, that's just the general dust from our demo room. If I turn it to the side here, you can't see it at all. Um, and that's one of the key things is the laser, when it's going away from you or when it's going to the side, it's, you know, a third as bright as when it's coming towards you. So when you're setting up, if you're, you know, on a little uh, stage or if you've got a platform or if you're even just, you know, all your audience is off to one side, make sure that you're going ahead and going over your audience. Now, sometimes that doesn't mean just having the laser going straight like that. Sometimes what that means is you'll have one laser over here and one laser over here, and you'll aim them both at angles, again, over your audience, but going crosswise. Yeah. This helps you in two ways. Uh, one is it gives you that cool interlocking web effect that people just absolutely love. But the other is it exposes you to a wider portion of the audience because your audience isn't always going to be facing straight forward. Some people are going to be facing this way, talking to their friends, while some people are facing this way, especially at school dances and that kind of thing. So by having that wider coverage coming from multiple directions, if you've got two lasers, put them far out, put them at a wide angle instead of putting them right next to each other, shooting straight down the middle. And then no matter where you are in the room, you're going to see more laser. In nightclub installations, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll see people four corner it specifically so that no matter where you are in the space, you've got the good view of a laser. So it's nice and bright coming towards you. Um, Absolutely. Shows up even more when I actually do put go ahead and put some of the haze in the air. So can we, can we talk happy. about that for a second? Can you show us this? I've never actually seen this before. <laughs> so this stuff, uh, this, this is just canned haze. It's got like no hang time whatsoever, but I keep a couple cans of it around because when you're doing a quick demo um, for a client who's coming in and we'll get a little bit into that, it takes, sometimes it takes forever to warm up the hazer and you don't want to really go about that. Sometimes the hazer's really loud. So if you can go ahead and just have your, your laser here and then you can just hit the haze real quick, it really just makes the effect, you know, hang out for a couple seconds and really stand out big. Uh, even here on the side where you couldn't really see it before, quick burst of the canned haze, it's a lightsaber. I was going to ask, how long does that haze actually hang in there for? This stuff, um, it hangs loosely for a solid minute or two. Uh, you That's get cool. that real tight cloud burst only for a couple seconds. That is very cool. Very cool. As soon as you said lightsaber, I remember actually one of the first things I ever did with laser shows, and I'm sure everybody's done this at some point, is create a lightsaber battle. Yeah. Uh, and, and it was... You know, it was a outer space uh, theme event for the school. I'm like, okay, look, we're going to do this. It's going to be campy as hell, but it, it was awesome. And it was funny when you mentioned the lasers crossing because it was that point when they started crossing. I'm like, okay, that looks even cooler because when you have two different color beams <laughs> interject like that, I'm like, oh, I'm getting all geeked out. Um, but anyhow, real quick. So as far as, you know, you're talking about shooting lasers over the audience and everything else. And Without again, I don't want to talk too much into the safety of things because that's a whole, like we talked about, it's a whole different topic. But I've noticed that just most people they just kind of go straight out, you know, they have it like let's say you know the laser this height and they shoot it directly there. I've seen some people, and I've tried both ways where it's up, let's say 16 feet, and I try to hit it where it's just above people's heads where it's a legal limit. And then I've had some where they're lower, still above people's heads, and then they shoot up. And I've noticed that. I always get a much better view when the laser does are basically no higher than nine or 10 feet. And I just put, you know, the final image within the safety limits. I mean, is there really a height that you would recommend the laser as far as the physical unit itself? You have to be able to nail that. Um, a lot of times there'll be lasers on the edge of the stage shooting up and over the audience. And oftentimes you have to do that. That's, that's just one of the practical realities of setup is that's, that's where you can put it. And that's the best thing that you're going to get. Um, but really what you're trying to do is reduce the angle of incidence to the eye. So whatever you can do to do that, um, the better you're going to be is from a brightness perspective. So if you can do them at a flat plane coming straight across or up high coming down, but still staying over the audience, 
you'll be a lot better off. And this is one of the things that we talk about a lot with some of our production level clients that are doing audience scanning. I'm mm -hmm. not going to get too deep into it because audience scanning is a whole separate can of worms. Oh, well, yeah. When people think audience scanning, they think, all right, well, I'll just get a 10 watt laser and I'll audience scan with that. The reality of the situation is if you had a 10 watt laser that's audience scanning, it's going to be way too bright, even if you've got 20s on the stage, because that angle of incidence to the eye is lower. A 5 watt laser that's audience scanning looks like a 10, 12 watt laser that's over your head, just because it's that much closer and you're getting that directional view. Um, I mean, in a nutshell, you know, when it comes to lighting and sound, I've always told people wattage doesn't matter because wattage is not a unit of or measurement of brightness. But it seems with, with the laser industry, it kind of sort of is, right? I mean, people don't measure lasers in lux or lumens. I mean, I even hear the pro guys always talk about wattage. So, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, like I have the X Laser Mirage and even though it's the same rating as other lasers that tout the same rating outside of the aperture, it's still brighter. The Mirage is brighter. So other than the actual physical wattage of the laser unit, I mean, what can make one laser brighter than the other? So this is, this is a topic that's pretty near and near and dear to us. Uh, power is, is absolutely not everything. It's important, but it's yeah. absolutely not everything. Um, our, our chief engineer here, Andrew gets really pissed off because he spent the whole time, a lot of time, figuring out how to convert milliwatts in laser to lumens based on wavelength. He built this really? big, long algorithm and it's actually really <laughs> accurate. And then I said, that's really great. I'm glad you took that on as a pet project. No one's ever going to go buy lumens with lasers because you can't. The legal classification for lasers is always going to be based on milliwatts because that's what the FDA and CDRH require. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not changing without a act of Congress. But a lot of things really do affect how your laser looks relative to brightness. I mean, if you've got no haze in the air or you're going up against a really fine pitch LED video wall like there are in a lot of clubs, uh, a 20 watt laser is going to look like nothing. It's going to look like, you know, a half watt laser. By that same token, if you've got that fine pitch LED wall, but you can turn it down or off during certain segments, maybe just flash it on and off when you're flashing the lasers on and off or You've got good, solid haze control, so you can have a nice layer of haze through the whole space, little additional competing lighting. You can make a half-watt laser look like it's 5 watts. It can look absolutely insane in the right conditions. Um, and that's, that's the big thing, is making sure that you're setting up for the right conditions. Beyond that, there are a lot of other uh, topics regarding power versus brightness. Um, there are some folks, X-Laser included, who in marketing had tried to do like a perceived brightness thing. And that was necessary at the time because there were multiple different wavelengths out there for laser diodes and some wavelengths are naturally brighter than others. So yeah. there was a period of time where that was sort of the way that everyone was doing it because you had to. Um, these days, everyone's using the same wavelengths by and large until you get into the really big crazy stuff. So it is pretty apples and apples with most of the lasers that are out there, but there are things like beam thickness. Um, in a short space, a thick beam is going to look brighter than a thin beam. That's that's the reality of the situation because it's catching more haze. But once you get 100 feet, 200 feet out, that thick beam is then going to immediately really start dropping off in brightness as it gets bigger and bigger, but the thin beam from the other laser doesn't have that problem. Uh, so there are tons of different factors that go into brightness. Awesome. And I've always wondered that. And I you know, I've told people, like, well, basically, yeah, with lasers, you're going to have to go by wattage rating. Um, yeah. But, you know, and, and, and I don't want to say in the end, it really doesn't matter. But at least for the the design perspective, you know, obviously, yeah, brightness will definitely count. But it's not like lasers really pull that much power anyway. So it's not like we need to worry about, oh, well, you know, we, we're limited on power. I mean, it really depends on, <laughs> on the setup. Because the thing is, it doesn't matter what the power level of the laser is for you, it matters what the effect you're going for is. Mm -hmm. uh, as an example of this, uh, the Knox just went on tour. Uh, one of our clients provided them core design. Great folks, they do really good design work. Um, the Knox just went on tour with the Mirage, the 400 milliwatt or 400, 500 milliwatt mobile beat Mirage that you would think that's that's not what you would send out on an electronic music tour. That's That seems a lot smaller than what you would do. But yeah. because of the fact that it was, you know, a low, low cost relative, relative unit, 
easy to set up, really nice fine beams that work well for a long distance. Uh, they were able to do, you know, eight of these and they got really cool, fine interlocking web effects, made it feel like a really big show where for the same amount of money, if they'd gotten two five watts, they mm -hmm. get, you know, eight or 10 500 milliwatts, you get a much bigger feeling show just because there's so much more going on. Oh, of course. And uh, I was going to say the Q&A for the end, but this one kind of ties into what you were just talking about. Somebody asked if the brightness of, let's say, a one watt red laser and a one watt blue laser, are they're going to be different, right, because of the color itself. And then adding on to that, if, for example, you hear a laser, you know, like um, if it says, you know, three watt laser, are they saying that it's red, green and blue three watts or, you know, how is that rating exactly combined together? And does the color play difference? You know, is a red watt or one watt red laser? Is that going to be darker or brighter than a one watt blue? So this is this is this is a complex topic that we're going to cover in a uh, another video in our, our summer video series later this year. But to just give you a sorry in a couple of weeks, uh, but just to give you the the rough overview. You're absolutely right that the brightness is not directly tied to the power level based on wavelength. So one watt. Mm -hmm. 445 blue is not going to look the same as a one watt 520 nanometer green. That green is going to be about three times brighter than that blue for the same power level. Uh, that's why color balance is such a crazy thing with lasers these days. You'll see a lot of them are very blue heavy. Like the Mirage, for example, could be a one watt laser if we just turned the blue diode up because it's the exact same raw dye, but that completely kills the white balance. So when people say it's going to be, you know, a three watt laser, that doesn't mean three watts of red, three watts of green, three watts of blue. Typically, that'll mean, depending on the, the level of projector you're getting, that could mean two watts of blue, half a watt of green, half a watt of red, or it could mean, you know, one watt all across the board, which is a halfway decent color mix. Um, it really depends on the manufacturer. As far as where that measurement is taken, that also depends on the manufacturer. For legal purposes, for classification, it has to be taken at 10 centimeters from the aperture, the front glass on the, on the face of the laser. But once you're in class four territory, which is any laser over 500 milliwatts, then that where you take the measurement can get a little fuzzy for a number of different manufacturers. Um, we take those measurements after the aperture. Most other reputable laser companies take those measurements after the aperture, but there except are a for couple. one, we won't say their name. But I'm, I'm not trying to talk about <laughs> anyone else's stuff. I'm not no, even for sure. To but my own I've actually no. I've, I, I, and I tell I, I want to just say that because I tell DJs always, and we'll talk about the Chinese stuff in another video, guys. But if it's imported, just don't mess with it. Mess. Talk to people like X Laser <laughs> that are in the U.S. But there are some companies that will measure it before the aperture. And to me, like they'll give you the before and after. To me, I find that dishonest. And that's what I liked about my Mirage is that it showed me, or you know, it, you had the measurements after the aperture. I didn't have to call and ask. Well, what is it outside of the aperture? So you um, just raised a, a great point that I would recommend to anyone who's shopping for a laser. Mm -hmm. When you call up a laser company or email them or anything like that, ask them, if I weren't to go with your company, who would you recommend? And what you'll find is most of the reputable laser companies, especially in the U.S., we're all friendly. We all work together. Some of us even buy parts from each other in order to put in our products. Um, so if, you know, the company that you're dealing with doesn't have an answer to that question, if the company that you're dealing with can't say, oh, well, you should probably go over to our buddies here. I wish we could help you out, but you know, there are gonna be times where we don't have a product for you. So if you weren't to go to, to go with us, we would recommend you go with, you know, X, Y, Z. If they don't have an answer to that, if they tell you, no, we're the best, there's no one else out there to talk to, they're lying and they, they're someone you should shy away from. Really? All right. Well, and I'm kind of glad you said that because it also answered a couple of questions too. So, uh, we, we just got lit with questions really fast. But let's go then to the next point here. Um, let's see. We talked about laser di uh, directionality, um, and then I know you already talked about more low power fixtures is almost better than a single big fixture, correct? Did you yeah, want to go further on that as well? That's definitely been the trend, and people feel people feel better about paying more. Your, your audience feels better about paying more for more fixtures. If they're looking to pay, you know, your rental cost is $500 to them for a single five watt laser. 
yeah, okay, but maybe you could go ahead and make $800 off of four 2-watt lasers, and it's not that much more work for you if you're running the same cable and you're just daisy-chaining them all across to each other, but they feel like they got a giant show. Awesome, and I did... You know, it's one of those that, of course, you know, as, as DJs, LDs, whatever we're in, oh, we want to get the biggest, the baddest. You know, when we do, there is such a thing as overkill. You know, buying a 10-watt uh, laser to do school dances for me, I'm like, no, I don't need that. You know, I could. <laughs> we have, we have I mean, a laser in our shop right now that we didn't build. We're just, he's a, he's a friend of ours that we're helping out that is a 14-watt uh, green-blue laser. This thing, I'll, I'll send you a picture to post up with woo. this uh, in the comments because it is literally two and a half feet by two and a half feet by a foot tall absolutely gigantic i can't imagine this guy uses it for sweet 16s i can't imagine hauling this thing around yeah that's um, it's it's something else but yeah green, green blue only just giant but the thing is this is the kind of power level that you want in a space where you've got an 800 foot throw if mm -hmm. you've got a 200 foot throw that power is completely wasted on you. You'd be much better off with a couple different fixtures for the same cost or less um, and have a bigger show. Absolutely. Uh, real quick, hang on one second because a bunch of questions are coming in. Guys, if you're putting in your questions, we will get to them, I promise. Um, as far as finding them on Facebook, just search X Laser on Facebook. You'll be able to find that. We'll post those links in a little bit as well. Real quick, a lot of people everywhere can't use haze so they think that lasers aren't for them or they assume that when we're talking about graphics lasers or we're talking about i don't even want to say just the bliss but just the dots everywhere you know there's tons of manufacturers that have done that uh years ago i know x laser had their own version of that too and obviously you know i mean that got a lot of back uh back not backslash what's the word uh, just uh, a lot of flack because djs were pointing them at the bride and grooms during the first dance and unlike led lights a flash will not override a laser, at least a good laser. It's going to show no matter what. So let's talk about graphic shows for a second before we go into the fun stuff and everything else. Um, but let's talk about specific with graphics projections. I love my Mirage because I can do graphics with it. Somebody asked what's a good laser projector to do graphics. But just kind of walk people through what they can expect to do with a laser besides just aerial beams and liquid skies. So this is a great point that gets directly into marketing your laser and your services. Um, the number one thing that we've discovered that really helps communicate what a laser is good at and what a laser is not good at when it comes to graphics and text and things like that uh, is living neon. And go ahead and describe this to your customers as being, it's, it's an infinite living neon sign. Anything that looks good as neon is going to look amazing in laser because they're ultra high contrast, ultra high saturation. It, it literally looks like a neon sign that can dynamically shift. Um, that also, at the same time, while you're not telling them directly, well, it can't do photographs, it can't do video, that kind of thing, you'd be amazed at how many people do think that you know these kinds of laser projectors can do photographs and video. They're really not, not designed for that. They're never going to do that well because that's not the right tool for the job. But by telling your clients that it is living neon, it gets them excited about that prospect. Neon has this, this grandeur, this allure to it. It's, it's, it's showy. It stands out. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, they're now not expecting it to do photographs, video, raster capabilities without you explicitly telling them you can't. You've told them that they can't in a positive way. Okay. And... You know, talking about graphics, one of the things that really, really pushed me towards Mirage, because, you know, I had the uh, Mobile MK5s, and I love those, but then the Mirage just had analog, and, you know, I get gushy about analog <laughs> over TTL, but then, you know, a lot of people hear, well, analog, hold on, a digital, digital's better. So, in a nutshell, what's analog, and why is that better? So, that's, that's, that's an absolutely great point. Um, all of our Galvo-based lasers, the, the ones that can do animations and interface with the computer and all that, are analog now. Uh, it used to be the case where there was a big price difference between the two, but in the last couple of years, that's definitely come way down, which has helped. The big difference between TTL or digital uh, versus analog mm -hmm. is TTL and digital is it's on and off. It's ones and zeros. It's highs and lows. So if you've got a two-color laser, which is red and green. You got two red, uh, red diode and a green diode. You can do red, green, and then you can do yellow, which is the full power mix of those two. 
But if you've got an analog laser that's got red and it's got green, that's able to do a range of different power levels in between. So in addition to both at full power where you get yellow, you can also you know, decrease your green and now you've got a bit of an orange. Or you can go ahead and you know, raise up your green, decrease your red a little bit, and now you've got more of a lime yellow, that kind of thing. So it's almost uh, the difference between- you know, Much wider color palette. So it's almost the difference between having, it's almost like having a old school par can with a gel and a chaser pack, not even a dimmer pack, just on and off versus LEDs on DMX. Absolutely, you nailed it. Uh, that was yeah, much better so, than my description. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, well, I, I, and to me, it's like I, I try to find an easier way to explain things, but then analog, I'm like, okay, it's really hard for me to. And then you also have analog, actually, analog with linear response, I think is what it is. Analog There's an with analog. linear response and then analog with uh, exponential or logarithmic yeah. responses. Um, yeah, those get those get a little, that's where it starts to get a little bit hairier because some of it is directly tied to the color response that the manufacturer wants. Some of it is tied to what you want. Um, I would definitely recommend using a software package like QuickShow where you can, you know, adjust your palette and have that mm -hmm. full control. Or if you get the uh, upgrade to Beyond, um, also by the company called Pangolin, who I know you're going to have on later this week, and I'm sure they can talk a lot more about it. You can program your own custom color curves and everything like that. And people really like that feature. Absolutely. Now, for the next one, you may want to do your share screen or bring the, or actually, I guess you, you are. So you can just bring your uh, the image over because I know you have those photos you sent me. So let's talk about fun stuff that a few people are doing. And you, you sent me an image that said God Ray. And I'm like, what is that? And then I see, I'm like, oh my God. No so I sent you I sent um, you this uh, this photo from uh, another computer. So fortunately, I happen to have one of these exact photos printed out on a poster board in the demo room here. I'm as I say, if not, if not actually, if not, I have it. I can real quick pull it up if that's easier. I, I can grab it in just one second here. Okay. While you have that, I'll I'll have the other photo ready to go too. The God Ray effect um, is one that, and, and we're getting a bit into effects that are very cool but no one ever does like you very very rarely see this and when you do do this um it it's a big deal house of worship one of the things i love about the house of worship work with regards to lasers is a lot of times these, these pastors and such they come up to us and they say we have one job get people in get them to keep coming back lasers are a big part of that lighting is a big part of that um, and so we call it the God Ray, not because it's popular with House of Worship, even though that mm -hmm. is the market that it's most popular with. It's also very good with corporate. Uh, corporate work pays the best until you're getting up to like the giant, you know, EDM show level of laser shows. At this, you know, mobile DJ, mobile entertainer level, corporate shows pay the best when it comes to laser graphics for sure. Really? Um, that's that's hands down the response that we've had from our clients. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the, the key thing with the God Ray effect is it, it's called that because this is exactly what it looks like in video games. Um, it's where you've got a piece of scrim or you've got some reflective surface, or some, not some reflective surface, but some surface that catches the beam. So what we're looking at right here is back here in the, uh, I'm trying to do this backwards and not looking at it. Back here is where our uh, laser actually starts. And then we've got haze through the air, so you're getting this nice paisley effect. And then this layer right here, which allows you to see the graphics, mm -hmm. is just a bit of scrim. Standard stage Sharks 2 scrim. You can get it from Rose Brand or you know any other source that you need to for your, for your fabrics. Um, and it allows you to still have the beams go through, so you still get the aerial effect, but you also, crisp and clear, see the graphic. And it makes it really stand out because it's an effect that you don't see anywhere. It's an effect that you can only do with laser. Gobo can't cut it the same way that this can. No, uh, that is awesome. Can you put that real quick center screen so everybody can see it for just a moment? Like, and then, here. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do that. I like it. That well, you know, and that opens up so many different opportunities. I, I wish I had thought about that when uh, I did a haunted house homecoming or homecoming. Man, that would have been great to do like ghosts and stuff. Haunted houses love this effect too. It's it's very popular. And especially, you know, like uh, I think you just mentioned like the pepper scrim or yeah, pepper scrim, uh, the rose, not rose, but there's a company that calls pepper scrim, which is, does that similar type of effect. Uh, and is that what you use? Let me actually share it on, share my screen here for just a second. 
And it's actually kind of exciting news in that in that world because Rose Brand just came out with two new scrims that have glass fibers embedded um, that uh, I haven't had the chance to mess with it yet, but one of my clients has started messing with it. And it's, it's really cool stuff because it's a lot more high gain than standard scrim. That is, yeah, that... There we go. So let's talk about the, the Apollo image. Yeah. Tell us about this. What, what, what do they do? How did that work? <laughs> so this is the this is the exact same thing except instead of scrim here, um, and this was this was shot in the same demo room that we're we're in now, and this was also done with a uh, mobile beat mirage. Um, all I did was I uh, I did a quick trace in Quick Show on a picture of the Earth, and that's what it came up with. Then I just typed out Apollo Eleven in the software, mm -hmm. cut out the O, layered these two effects right on top of each other in order to make that happen. And then just a single laser shooting through a screen door I had laying around. Um, I was repairing a screen door for my house and I had it laying around in the shop. And it was the anniversary of the Apollo, Apollo 11 mission. And I decided to just bring it into the demo room and grab a quick picture. You know, I, I like that because I thought this was the pepper scrim, which is like $200 a square foot. Y you used a screen from a screen door. That this, is is, this is just metal mesh from a screen door. Um, but you can do it with standard, cheap shark's tooth scrim straight from, you know, I, I, Rose Brand is the only one that comes to the top of my head because I don't buy a lot of theatrical fabrics. Um, yeah. I'm sure there are a number of other folks who have it and, and can take good care of you there. That is wicked. Um, let's talk about it. Uh, you said, uh, so let's see here. We'll go back. Uh, sorry, just cut me off here. Uh, oh, yeah. So we talked about the God, right? So now let's talk about overlaying laser and video. You had mentioned about that. And that's pretty interesting. I've been wanting to do it, but I haven't exactly found the best kind of project to try that with. So there are two big applications for this kind of thing. And there's a reason why uh, you would want to overlay laser and video. This is a little more on the advanced side when it comes to the programming. It takes a bit more time. It's a little more intensive. Um, uh, can I, get, are you still there? I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Okay, sorry, awesome. I was talking sorry about something that. like that. No, that's great. Um, so it's a little bit heavier on the uh, programming side, but it's it's not not the end of the world there. So the the thing that, laser, that video projectors are good at is frequent movement, raster images, you know, mm -hmm. nice fills, no flicker or anything like that. They just, they, they fill in with static images, moving images. They do a great job there. But they're very, very low contrast, very, very low saturation. Even really good video projectors, you've got to control the environment very, very carefully in order to get them to Absolutely. look good. Um, so what some folks have started doing, namely Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, you know, big, big parks. Um, one of the, the effects that they've started doing that can be scaled to the mobile entertainer level especially when it comes to, again, corporate gigs, because when they see this kind of thing, they, they like to flip out, um, is taking a laser projector, which is terrible at doing fills and raster images and that kind of thing, layering it over a video projector so that you can get that ultra high contrast, ultra high saturation. Sometimes yeah. your audience, depending on how you did your programming, doesn't even know that you've done it. It just seems like a more dynamic, deep image to them. In some cases, like if you've got an image of a fireplace, what uh, you may do is use the laser to just do embers flying here and there, just occasionally, just a little pop here and there. And that ultra high saturation, ultra high contrast blast really makes it stand out. In a more blatant sense of it, you'll have you know video playing of somebody's band playing and you see the bass kit and you'll put you know a monogram on the bass kit of living neon right there in the middle and it's swirling around or something like that. Corporate logos you'll have a complex corporate logo that a laser may not be good at because they're not good at the complex stuff by themselves. And then maybe you're just doing an accent of the outline. Or if you've got a gobo, forget about video projector, just a regular gobo projection, mm -hmm. and you want to make just the initials of the monogram stand out, layering the laser right on top of that, all of a sudden you've got more depth to it. It's a really cool dynamic effect. You know, and it's it's funny that you mentioned Disney because the first thing I thought of was the Little Mermaid. Uh, they, uh, at least here in Orlando, they have like the live Little Mermaid, and it incorporates uh, video, video on a pepper scrim type screen, uh, it, or ghost screen, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they has lasers, gobos. It's a little bit of everything, and it. You know, I've seen Disney use like on the cruise ship. They use the lasers to create the Tinkerbell effect. So you see Tinkerbell yeah. on video flying, but then you've got the pixie dust because you want that sparkle. But video simply cannot, not physically possible, really. 
to recreate. Even with, you know, if you didn't have an OLED screen, you're still not going to get that. Like you had mentioned, there's just the contrast isn't there. Yeah, they're still using quarter million dollar video projectors, but at World of Color, they're still using lasers for that ticket yeah. effect. You're absolutely well, right. And, and and then, but the Little Mermaid was interesting. They were just doing it just to do like fishes around. And I'm like, okay, they, they could have video mapped it. And heck, they didn't need to use lasers. They just did it for the sake of using lasers. Now, from my perspective, that's how I see it. But then the people are like, oh, that's so cool. They're using lasers. And I think that's something that we kind of get lost in. We think, oh, well, video can do this. Video can do that. Yes, but sometimes the audience looks back and says, man, that's awesome. Lasers. <laughs> you know, back in the 90s, like planetarium shows were a thing. Back when people actually went outside and weren't just glued to their damn phone the whole time, you know. I think planetarium shows were a thing. I I have still never seen one in person. I really wish I could, but I think a lot of us forget that, yeah, I mean, it's not just that there are things that lasers can physically do, the video can. Sometimes you sh we could just use a laser because we're using a laser. And that's going to tie up to one of the questions that somebody asked that I kind of want to wait a minute on. Um, real quick, uh, let's actually talk then about your next one because you talked about combining multiple projectors. Uh, for complex graphics. And this is something that I think is really cool because we talked about video mapping, we've talked about layering lights together, but a lot of people don't realize that you can combine multiple projectors for really complex graphics. So how does that work exactly? So this this is one of those things that I wanted to just, just barely touch on because I'm sure that uh, the folks at Pangolin are going to get into it later, but this is one of those items that if you do this kind of service, if you go, if you're doing lasers and you're able to do this kind of thing, it's one of those things that sets you a set step higher, allows you to charge more, allows you to make more money off of your lasers. Um, and that's being able to do more complex images or if this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with getting a larger number of smaller projectors. If you've got a army of smaller projectors, half a watt, two watts, five watts, um, then you're able to combine them by overlaying them on top of each other using the Pangolin Beyond Advanced or Beyond, Beyond Ultimate software to either take a single image and then break it up into multiple different zones so that you can have much more complexity than you would normally have on a laser um, spread out across multiple lasers. And the software makes yeah. it very simple to do that. The other option is layer them on top of each other. And now your you know, four two watt lasers are a single eight watt laser layered on top of each other. Really, really much brighter stands out without having to spend the money on the rental for a larger laser without having to make that equipment investment, you're just maintaining your same equipment, having it be more versatile for other things. When it comes to drawing you know, a left half and a right half of an image, two sets of 30K scanners, especially at the low power level, at the half watt level, two watt level, five watt level, um, two sets of two lasers with 30K scanners are going to produce a better image than a single laser with 60K scanners at a lower cost. The upgrade cost for those 60K scanners uh, frequently, especially, you know, up, to, up until you get around 10 watts, um, you could have just bought another laser for that or almost the same price and of have course. more capability, more inventory, um, more flexibility for everything that you're doing. So there's a demo out there for Beyond. I would highly recommend that anyone who's making money off their lasers or wants to make money off their lasers, try it. Uh, I'm spending more time trying to sell Pangolin software than uh, my hardware here. But uh, honestly, truly, it is it is pretty great. I think that you folks should go out and try it because that also to effect um, is one of the top features of the program. One of the things that I did with my Mirage and Pangolin Beyond, and honestly, it's it's one of those features that is the coolest thing ever. And when you guys look at the cost of Pangolin Beyond versus Quick Show, you're going to freak. I mean, there, there's no way to describe it. Pangolin is as pro software as pro software gets. But there's nothing Beyond can do. I, I don't even think that the guys that have been doing professional, you know, the professional lasers don't even realize everything Pangolin can do half the times because there's so much. But one of the things that I did that I loved is, you know, I want to do audience scanning and I don't want to get into the variance for audience scanning. First of all, the FDA hates the word DJ and audience scanning. I mean, there's no really denying that, you know, they do make it a little bit tougher in that sense. Um, but what I did is I, you know, if, this is the emu laser. So basically, guys, like what Adam had said is you can stack two lasers together. I stacked my mirages and then I used a video projector and it literally created one image using both the laser and the video projector. And it was cool because I was able to do both because I don't want And somebody said, you know, can you take a laser like the mirage and aim it at the audience? And again, those are all safety questions. We're going to save that for a different show uh, and we'll tell you about that later on. 
Uh, but this show's really talking about making the money. And there are some ways you can make money pretty fast on lasers. I would say lasers have been one of my fastest ROIs. It's also been one of the ones where I'm like, okay, I want more. I want more. I mean, it really is. You can't just stop at one laser. So thanks for that, Adam. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about, I mean, there are there ways to make money fast on lasers? This is, this is one of the things that, that uh, production clients love, and I'm sure mobile, mobile entertainers love as well, is lasers, you get your money back dramatically faster than you do on almost any other lighting or sound equipment. Uh, because they are so specialized, you can command those higher rates that are, especially now with the cost of the, the, the much lower cost of the lower powered projectors, um, it's, it's real quick and easy to get your turnaround on. There are a couple different particular ways to get that turnaround a little bit faster. Uh, and this, this really, if you ever have any questions or if there's ever anything we can do to support you in trying to sell your laser, you say, hey, I tried this with a client, didn't really work, talk to us. We've got hundreds of clients that we've worked with on this particular issue, and I absolutely want you to be making money on your laser because then you buy more lasers. It's, it, it's a win for absolutely everybody. Absolutely. Um, so going with that living neon concept, there are some companies that'll tell you a laser projector will do gobo projection and you never need a gobo projector. That's not true. Um, gobos are better at doing a lot of text at once. Gobos are better if you're trying to do, you know, really intricate monograms, that kind of thing, than a laser is. That's, that's the reality of the situation. But what gobos can't do is get quickly turned around for, you know, in five minutes and then also have really dynamic movement. So with a gobo projector, you can do color shifts, rotation, that kind of fun stuff. But with a laser projector, and you've got that living neon effect, you can do color segmentation. You can do three-dimensional morphs, things that were just completely physically impossible with a gobo projector that give the whole thing a lot more depth. Um, on top of that, the ability to combine the two makes it really stand out, especially for corporate events. I cannot, cannot under, I, I can't overstate just how much corporate clients in particular, if you're doing anything with them, board meetings, things like that. They love seeing their, their numbers in laser. They love seeing their logo in laser. And this is the stuff that makes you money, even if they're not up buying the laser and doing the upsell there. The kind of stuff that makes you stand out keeps repeat business. And repeat business, I'm sure Arnaldo can tell you way more about this than I can. But the repeat business of people coming back to you every time because of that wow factor is what makes a lot of money for you in the long run. Oh, um, absolutely. And, you know, I'm kind of glad that you mentioned corporate events because I wasn't, I mean, I'm aware that, you know, that, yeah, corporate events like to spend money on things. But you said board meetings because, I mean, corporate events put board in board meetings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean it, it's, it how, how do you approach that? Very... How do they... Sorry, go ahead. It, it, it has a number of scales. I mean, obviously, the X-Laser board meeting has lasers because that's what we do. Well, um, yeah. But, you know, there are a number of companies out there where maybe they don't want to have it for all their board meetings, but for their annual company meeting, their annual company holiday show. Um, I'm sorry, not this show. Their annual company holiday party, um, their annual big, you know, all-hands meetings. Um, all the way up through Walmart and such. I mean, Walmart, Home Depot, these are companies that have used our clients with our lasers in order to do big shows when, you know, the CEO's coming through, tons of lasers going on, that kind of thing. That's, there's a whole scale in between those two where people can fit in at the mobile entertainment level around Christmas time. I don't know how busy that is for you guys when it comes to weddings and things like that, but when it comes to corporate stuff, for being able to do graphics projection, on the side of a building, inside of a ballroom, that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. There's a ton of potential for that and they shell out good money for it. A graphical awesome. logo projection can range between $200 at the low end up to $4,000 for one night for writing on the side of a building with a high powered laser. Um, if you're a established X laser client and you're renting a you know 20 watt laser, and I'm trying, not trying not to get too far out of the scope of the mobile entertainer side of things, but if you're running a 20 well, we have, laser, say, don't, don't be afraid to. We've got a couple guys that do large productions here as well. Um, I've actually been reading the stream, so I know they're one of the guys. I don't want to say his name, but uh, he hits triple digit productions. So by all, and not mean like 300 bucks. I mean like 100k <laughs> per event. So yeah, by all means, let, let let's talk about big and small because 
you know, did you did do we ever think 15 years ago that we would be using high power lasers for mobile events? Yeah, you I know, mean, that's, that's a great <laughs> point. And just in the last three years, the whole landscape has changed with regards to what capabilities are available at what price points. No, but hang, hang, hang on, hang on. We, we just uh, you're, you're having a bad stream. Hang on one second. Uh oh, hang on. Refresh. You're not uploading anything, are you? Absolutely not. Okay, hang on. It just got choppy like real fast. So uh, those of you that are watching, hang on one second. We'll get you guys back up and running in just a moment. Please refresh. Uh, okay, good. At least I know it's not just me, though. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, we're going to... Okay, Mr. Jake Funk Sanchez, let me know. Okay, so apparently people can hear. Uh, okay, we're good. You're, you're back up. I don't know what All happened, right. but up oh, and you're back down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if you guys are watching, let us know right now um, if you guys can hear us okay. Uh, if so, the magic word is potato and just type the word potato. Let me know because that's what YouTube is acting like right now. Um, it's also incidentally what my head looks like. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it was hard to tell because you've got the all black background. Oh, you did that on purpose. <laughs> I see what you, I see what you did there. Um, and real quick, somebody went, well, we wait for YouTube to behave itself. Um, somebody mentioned, you know, good customer service. And once, once, that's one of the things I do love about you guys. I mean, you offer amazing customer service, Thank you. Uh, you know, from helping with the variants. And guys, for those of you that know, I got my variants right during government shutdown. And if you guys have no idea how slow the FDA works, <laughs> they're a lot slower <laughs> during a shutdown. Uh, and yet Dan made it work. I have no idea how, but I got an email saying, here's the letter from the FDA. You're good. I'm like, how? Dan, it was, Dan it was, was a magician for sure, but there have definitely been a number of times where part, part of the advantage of being in the D.C. area is that the FDA is the headquarters is literally – 15 minutes away from us or three hours, depending on traffic. Um, but it means that we can go down there and stand in their office until things get done. Now to the really? credit, FDA has undergone some huge changes on the uh, laser light show side of things lately. And they're really doing a great job lately. They've made a, a whole new commitment to turning things over quickly and cracking down on the folks who aren't doing things the right way. Um, they've done a really good job lately. Some of the new folks, in particular, uh, Dr. Calhoun over there, really mm -hmm. good folks. That's awesome. Yeah, You know, one of the things that I love, at least, you know, we, we all have our grievances with different government departments. The FDA, I mean, people don't realize how backtracked they are, but I've seen these guys actually go to the shows and shut down illegal companies like that. And guys, yeah. if you've never seen it, it is glorious. It isn't just two guys with a, I mean, it is technically two guys with a clipboard. Then it's a whole bunch of guys in black coming in. <laughs> I got to see that one time, I think it was NAMP, and it was an illegal laser company. And I mean, just like that, it was, they were done. There was a NAMP a couple of years ago where there was one company in the arena that was shooting a six watt green laser it was on the ground in the aisle shooting straight up at you. Oh. <laughs> that got shut down real quick, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so now let's go back. It looks like we're good. There's a million people writing potatoes, so that's good. Um, let's talk then. I mean, you mentioned standard rates that, you know, they can uh, basically anywhere from like 200 all the way to 1,200 a day for an experience. And is this with or without the gear? I mean, have you seen people where they just show up to a venue that already have lasers? Put in, but because they say I have experience, you know, I have a variance. There are people, how does that work? Yeah, there are people in this industry who do make twelve hundred dollars a day to show up and run a show. I'm not going to tell you that that's going to happen to you. That's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, sure. But if you're, you know, one of those folks who has your own gear and and, and can be mobile and get things done, um, there is always demand for that kind of thing especially if you do a good job of marketing your skills and marketing what you've got. Um, there's, there are regularly requests coming in here. We've got a referral network that we're building up for our clients coming up here pretty soon. Um, but we get requests all the time of, hey, my operator dropped out, or hey, we're looking to do a laser show in this area. What can you do for us? Um, and it depends entirely on the kind of show. Sometimes if it's you know a prom show or something like that and you're just – 
mm -hmm. looking to add on a little something. Arnold, you know a lot more than I do about the kind of rates that typically go for that. Um, but it can, you know, for a show where you're just bringing four lasers and adding that to something else and you're at the, you know, half watt to two watt range, that's, you know, a couple hundred bucks to 1500 just just for bringing yeah. something that takes way less time to set up than a moving head. <laughs> oh, you froze on me. Do you still hear me? All right. I, uh, I see that you're frozen, so I'm going to keep going in case the stream is still going since it appears that I'm hosting it. And I do apologize if uh, that doesn't quite work out. So the last thing I really wanted to check out here, uh, talk about here is demonstrating your laser. Um, absolutely make sure that if you have a laser and you've got an office, a warehouse, a garage, any way whatsoever to show it up, set it up and show it to your clients, nothing sells a laser like a laser. Make absolutely certain that you are showing it to your clients whenever possible. Um, when they see it, they want it. But if you just tell them in the abstract, oh yeah, I've got lasers, they're pretty cool. Oh, are you back, Arnaldo? Yeah, my modem just died. All right, cool. So we are I'm hot spotting. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure you kept everybody entertained while I was gone. So anyhow. I just rambled. Um, we told dirty jokes about you. <laughs> I told them what you got up to at LDI. It's just bad things. So um, basically, um, no, I mean, you mentioned about the problems and everything. I remember when I first started doing laser, I mean, I, I'll be very upfront about it. I, I, I don't go for time coder shows because that's not something we wanted to get into. I mean, that's a whole different thing within itself. It was just. Here's some lasers, pew, pew, pew. And we would make, you know, we, it was an upsell of anywhere from, depending on how many lasers, from $500 to $2,500 a show. We were the only ones that had a variance, and schools didn't variance until I told them what a variance is. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, listen, if a laser hits somebody in the eyes, problems can happen, and uh, you guys are going to get screwed. And, you know, I mean, but then a DJ started getting variances or even production companies because, first of all, fire marshals, uh, at least around here, are now the laser police. When people ask, is there a laser police? Yes, apparently the fire marshal is. And a fire marshal will check. In Disney, like, you can't even step in without a la uh, with a laser unless you've got a variance and you give it to the fire marshal ahead of time. Um, so everybody started doing that. So, then, okay, what's the next step? Well, you know, there's a few classes. And as you know, and guys, we'll say this for a different stream – about being a you know laser safety officer and yeah. actually taking additional classes. And we pushed out our marketing materials. We're not just licensed to run lasers. We just have the variants. We are laser safety officers. That's the next step up. Um, and for a lot of schools, they appreciate that. They appreciate knowing that we really take the health and safety of students in mind. And we don't aim lasers down on the floor. Uh, and we'll cover weddings in a second because there's been a lot of questions about weddings. Somebody asked about doing a demo in a classroom. And I think this goes with your third point that nothing sells a laser like a laser. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, exactly. That's what we were talking about uh, when things dropped out. So I'll, I'll just revisit, uh, revisit it here. If you've got an office, a warehouse, a garage, any space where you take clients in order to talk to them about any of you, other, I understand that's not a reality for a lot of folks. Mm -hmm. But if there's any way that you do have that space, when you've got a client over for something else unrelated or if they're talking about other details of the gig, always, always, always be like, hey, do you have two, three minutes? I want to show you this new piece of equipment I got. It's really cool. Thought you might enjoy it based on some of our other discussions. Have the laser ready so that you can get it yep. running in one to two minutes. If you need to get a can of haze, get a can of haze. They're not that expensive. They're not that great, but the startup time is instant. Um, the laser, have it ready to go. You can, generally speaking, if you've got a nice quick computer, get things going in one, two minutes. Because if you tell people about a laser, they get they get interested. You know, it's, it's cool. Of course. Like lasers, that's neat. They see the laser, they want it. Nothing yeah. sells the laser like the laser. You've got to show it to them in order to make money off of it. And you will make money off of it. One of the key things with lasers is the standard going rate just for the dry hire, not counting any any you know, additional fees that you're filing, that you're charging for paperwork or an operator or anything like that is between 15 and 25% of your purchase price for the laser is what you're generally, you know, nationwide average charging for your rental. Um, it's, it's incredibly fast return. And that's what keeps people coming back is that fast return on the lasers. 
Oh, absolutely. So let's real quick answer some questions and then we're yeah. going to give the prize away. Woohoo! There are a lot of questions. Guys, if I skip your question, it was most likely about safety. We're going to cover that for the next show. Um, let's see. The first question uh, is, oh, we already answered that one. Uh, Chris Davis asked, what would you recommend the newcomer to look at um, as far as laser and even wattage wise for really getting into lasers? So this question depends entirely on what it is you're trying to do. And I'm not trying to give you just a cop out answer. The key question is, what is your standard venue? Are you typically doing gymnasiums? Are you typically doing ballrooms? Are you doing, you know, larger mm -hmm. arenas? Or are you doing backyards? I mean, there are people all across the spectrum here and we can tell you a model that's gonna work well for most folks, but the reality is you might be much better off with two of a smaller model that gives you a bigger show for a less cost, um, something along those lines. What kind of control do you have over your area? Uh, as far as how often do you get to use haze? Do you never get to use haze? How much ambient light are you fighting? That kind of thing. Um, I wish I could tell you that there's one just straightforward, this is your beginner laser answer, but it really does depend entirely on the environment, whether it's install, mobile, what you're trying to do. The best thing I can tell you is go ahead and shoot me an email to adam at x-laser.com and I'll go ahead and give you a nice little consultation. We'll break things down. But the short version is if you're a nightclub doing a basic install, where you don't want to have to learn a bunch of programming or you're a mobile DJ and you've got tons of other things going on, you don't want to have to learn a bunch of programming, that's where the Caliente Aurora and the Aurora 4s come in. They are still perfectly safe lasers. They are designed to do just that flat plane so you don't have to worry about dipping into the audience or anything like that, but you still get the nice liquid sky effects, the nice hot beams. Um, but they are entry level products because the programming is very simple and limited because of that. Next but if step. they don't want if they don't want to get into having to buy another software and learn and have a you know, laptop, this this one runs on DMX, correct? Yeah, or? you can hook it up to my DMX or CompuShow or or any of those other you know programs, um, and it's just you can either set it in auto via DMX or you can go ahead and do your own programming. Uh, a guy named John Ward out of Texas does some really cool programming with the Auroras, where you can you know map your hot beams and all that good stuff. Awesome. Um, let's go into the next question then. Uh, this comes from Chris Lloyd. What is the difference between the lasers that we've been talking about versus, you know, a laser like the 8DJ, the Micro Galaxian, or the Bliss Light, or the Royal Sky? Yeah. So the the lasers that we deal with these days are really more of the, the high low-powered, high-powered stuff. Um, there are a couple different classifications of laser, and I'll try not to get too deep into this because it gets a little boring. There's class one, which is a CD player where there's no exposure to the laser whatsoever. So power level doesn't matter. Class two, which is like grocery store barcode scanners, which is very, very, very low power, less than a laser pointer. Class three R, which is below five milliwatts, which is legal laser pointers, which don't include this one to be perfectly frank. Um, and then the Galaxian and the Starburst lasers, the Bliss lights, and the, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, those are really more meant as you know area fillers. You're looking for the effect that's on the wall for the Bliss lights and that kind of thing. So they can get away with the low power because you need a lot less power when you're projecting against something as opposed to when you're going through the air. Absolutely. Um, the, uh, the other things like the Chave Scorpions and things like that. To be frank with you, it's been a little while since I've looked at the, that product line. Um, but in general, they're just lower power than what we're talking about here. So they're fine for a bedroom if you're just looking to mess around, or they're fine for um, a very, very small space. But if you're looking to get, you know, 40, 50 feet of throw, then you probably want something that's got a bit more beef to it. Of course. Um, and, you know, for those of you that, you know, tuning in or that have been tuned the what I call the business answer is everybody has those kind of lasers, but not many people have stepped into real lasers. You know, buying an X laser made us stand out. Buying a laser and not subcontracting from somebody else was huge. I will never subcontract anything where at all possible. We did with lasers kind of sort of because he was still an employee. We him as an employee in that sense. And he did some exclusive things for us. He gave us a better deal, but buying our own lasers i mean really just it made things better and not only that but i noticed that my lds were able to program their shows better because now they also had a program with lasers in mind 
and it pulled away from just doing the same things with lights again and again. Um, okay, so real quick, um, somebody asked, so basically you never point your lasers at your audience as a general rule. Is there, uh, and this was David Vallejo, is it a good laser where you can make text? Okay, so that's two questions. I'm sorry, uh, you I think, I think that and your, your audio broke up on me. I couldn't quite hear the question. Yeah, I just got the notification. Sorry. Um, okay, so he first asked about pointing lasers at the audience, and we've already talked about that. But is there a good laser that you can make text? And real quick, I want to add to that. Let's talk about laser fonts, because some fonts look horrible with lasers. So is there a particular font that you recommend for a wedding that would look good? Please see. So I'm just getting the question in bits and pieces because there's a bit of distortion. So I apologize. For okay. Answering a no, question that, that's that my ask. fault. Hang on. I'm just going to move my phone to a different area. Okay. And I'll text it to you. Worst case, have your Facebook open. All right. Um, um, a, so, good, a, a good laser for text. Okay. And what fonts would look good but not cause too much blinking because they're too advanced to scan? That's a great question. Um, as far as the hardware itself, I can only speak to my own products. Uh, there are other other things out there that if you're looking for, we can help you out. Um, but in particular, if you're operating in fairly ideal conditions, so you don't have a ton of extra spill light, but there is some on the wall, you're uh, going on light surfaces indoors, the Mirage is a great entry level unit in particular because you can do nice fine text and graphics. It's got really smooth analog color mixing. It's got really good scanners in it. Um, it's got those super sharp beams, which are really great for graphics and text. But if you're in an area where you've got a bunch of competing light, then you're going to need to move up to something like the Skywriter HPX or HPX Tours, that kind of thing. Um, that's another one of those things where give us, give us a call or shoot us an email, let us know how much light you're competing with. We'll let you know what we think will work well for you. Um, moving into what text works best. There are a couple different tricks that you can do, and this is going to be another one of the items in our video series. But this is a okay. really great question that uh, gets asked a lot that I keep forgetting to write something up on. The short version is you can use any text that you want, and generally speaking, your audience will enjoy it. You're, by audience, I mean, you know, the bridegroom, that kind of thing. Um, if what you do is some form of scrolling pattern, that kind of thing. So you may have a 20-letter word or phrase, um, and that 20 letter word or phrase when you're doing in a, you know, nice block text font or a fancy font may look not great. It may flicker a lot. It may just uh, be kind of gross. Uh, the best thing you can do for that if you want to keep that font is to make it larger and have it scroll on and off or have it do something visually interesting, going around a cone, something like that. What you're doing is instead of 20 letters, you've only got three or four or five on there at one time. But to your audience, you're still getting the whole message across. And on top of that, it's now dynamic instead of static and more visually interesting. So you're cheating the laser, but making it more interesting. If you Absolutely. need to have something static the whole way across, go with like a stick text or a script text instead of a splock text, specifically because it uses about a third as many points. So you can get way more content on there with, with before you hit that point of flicker. Absolutely. And uh, real quick, those of you that are asking questions, we're going to try to answer all of them, but it is a little bit difficult. We're trying. Um, Adam, I'd like to later, maybe obviously sometime uh, in the fall, I'd love to do a live stream with you to talk about photography and video for lasers, because that is an art form uh, within itself. And, and, you know, for me, I, I, I've used my phone with the Filmic app because that really has worked out pretty well, even better than my DSLR. And, you know, you and I have talked about this uh, multiple times, but yeah. that question popped up a couple of different times and I would like to be able to uh, get that taken care of soon because um, that's going to be an hour discussion, I think. And by the way, am I sounding okay right now? Sounds great to me. Okay. I'm still hot spotting, but just in case I'll switch back. It looks like my internet's back up. Uh, my ISP decided, hey, uh, we're going to try to fix this for you. Well, thanks for disconnecting me. <laughs> we're just going to unplug um, <laughs> things and shake it for a little bit and see right. what happens. If it, if it does happen, I'll, I'll message you the question and then, you know, you can just pretend I'm talking to you. Okay. Um, Marvin asks, when purchasing X lasers, uh, you know, does that come with the easy variance kit still? Do they still have to buy it? Um, they turned in the uh, paperwork for FDA when they first bought the X laser 10 years ago, but they didn't get anything back from the FDA. And there's actually been three or four people that said they haven't gotten anything from the FDA and it's been over a year. What can they do about that? So I guess first question, easy variance kit. Second, what happens with the FDA when they're slow? So when things are slow or if you've, you know, set something in for a while um, and you haven't seen anything back, 
basically if it's been more than two months, email sales at xlaser.com, support at xlaser.com, adam at xlaser.com, variances at xlaser.com, any of those. Um, and we'll get it resolved for you quickly because we want to stay on top of these things. There have been times, a lot of times, um, where what happens is the folks at CDRH who process variances do everything correctly. They get the variance through, they get it processed, they, they mm -hmm. approve it, everything's great. And then the dockets management people don't mail it out. This happens far more often than you would think. <laughs> yeah, it happened to you too? Yeah. Um, yeah, I was dealing with a case of this literally last week for, of all places, Six Flags. I mean, you'd think that they would push that through when they would actually mail it out, but no, they had the digital version available. They didn't post the digital version on regulations.gov, but it was available, so we were able to just email it out. So if that's the case, go ahead and shoot me an email and let me follow up on it because I'd love to take care of that. Um, as awesome. far as easy variance kits, are they included? When do you need them? What do you need them for? You need an easy variance kit for every single item that we sell because you need a variance for every single item that we sell. But you only need one. Um, that one variance covers every single product that we do if, with the exception of audience scanning equipment. Audience scanning is a separate variance. That's outside of the scope of this webcast. Um, you only need one variance for no matter how many different lasers that you're getting of ours. The variance is compatible with some other brands, but not all other brands. So make sure you talk to us before you're trying to work with the variance with other lasers, because we don't want that to end poorly for you. Um, oh, absolutely. There are some dealers who don't charge for the easy variance kit. They just stuff it in with the laser. There are some dealers who charge for it. There are some dealers who offer it for free as an incentive. That all depends on who you go to, um, and that's up to the dealers to decide. As far as Okay, so I've got two vari two lasers. Do I need two variances? No, just one. As far as, okay, it's been a year since I bought my last easy variance kit. It says it's up for renewal. Do I get a new easy variance kit? No. Send in your annual report. And we send everyone out a couple weeks before the annual report is due an email saying this is how you fill it out. But it's basically five minutes to fill out a pre-filled form of your name, address, and how many shows you did, what equipment you used. If you've bought a new laser in the uh, time since you've applied for your variance and gotten for it, all you have to do is put that new laser on your annual report. FDA says you're good to go. And if you're like me and you forget to fill it out last year, what happens? And you forgot to fill out your <laughs> annual report last year? <laughs> I did. I'm like, oh, crap, because I, I didn't get the email because we were having issues with the email. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, uh-oh. And um, so the I mean, I got... Is... <laughs> We get this one a lot, um, and the short version is go ahead and send it in. <laughs> we haven't heard of, like, go ahead and fill it out at your earliest convenience and send it in. If you need instructions on how to fill it out, just shoot us an email to variances at xlaser.com or info at xlaser.com. Um, okay. We'll go ahead and send you the instructions. But FDA is, is while you should absolutely endeavor to send your annual report in on time, um, every single time, they're fine, like, they'd rather get it than not get it. So go ahead and send it when you can, um, and you'll be fine. Awesome. Yeah, that's the one thing I've forgotten. So um, later I might have to ask you for some help on that because I'm like, huh. And then the year before that, um, it never sent. I thought it said it did, but apparently it, it didn't show up on the thing. So I'm like, um, whoops. But then, like, you know, I sent it all was good, hopefully. Um, so at least that's good to know. Um, okay, so now the two biggest asked questions. One, you talked about corporate events. Do they find the laser operator or does the laser operator find the corporate events? What is the number one way to get into like these board room meetings? So that's a, that's a great question that's probably a little bit outside of the scope of my expertise. So I'm just going to tell you a couple things that have worked for, for my clients. Um, if you're a mobile entertainer, odds are very good that you've spent a fair amount of time in ballrooms and event halls and things like that. Uh, and being people who know your craft, you've gotten to know the people who work at these ballrooms, event halls, that kind of thing. So it's definitely important to maintain and foster these relationships, um, be friendly with these people, get these people to know you, so that when a corporate event comes around, um, you can say, hey, 
you got any corporate folks who come through here to do this kind of thing? Because if you don't mind, I'd love to be put in touch with them because here's a sample of some of the other work that we've done for other corporate clients. Mm -hmm. You may have to do this work gratis right off the bat, just for free in order to start building up your portfolio. But once you have that portfolio, once you have that marketing manual that you can hand to somebody and say, this is some of the other stuff that we've done. Check this out. I think you're going to like it. Um, having those contacts in order to do the handoff is really important because then it's not a cold call. You're not contacting them completely out of the blue. It's coming from someone they already have a relationship with, already have a degree of trust with, and you're not taking advantage of everyone. You're, you're legitimately providing a service that helps everyone out. They want to have a cool corporate event. Ladies Absolutely. And corporate events stand out. They're very different. Um, so that's the kind of thing you can do. If you're looking for more general tips on how to contact people with cold calling, I generally don't really like cold calling, but there is a book called uh, Duct Tape Marketing. If you are doing, you know, sales, that kind of thing, check it out. Um, there's a whole section towards the end of the Duct Tape Marketing book. Uh, I think it's by John Janch. He, very, very good. It's on Audible, too. Um, that speaks specifically about sending out marketing kits. So just getting mailer lists and instead of just blindly sending things out there, focusing on just a few assets with high value content to send to them in order to be able to target them a bit better. Um, so I'd recommend that if you don't really have the relationships built out up at these event halls and you need to do some cold calling, go in that direction. Awesome. Now let's talk about weddings. Um, you know, obviously these guys should hopefully know how to get into weddings. I don't want to go too much into that, but let's talk about laser applications at weddings. You know, uh, you mentioned doing the gobos, uh, or even like, for example, uh, somebody mentioned by like using the letters or creating the gobo with the letters and then making a pattern around with the lasers, which will look really cool. Uh, but what are some other things that you've seen people use lasers for at weddings? Well, I mean, you, you, like you were just saying, you've got the gobos and you've got, you know, the cool scrolling abstract effects around them. But, I mean, the number one thing that we see people using lasers for at weddings is the aerial effects over the dance floor, having fun with that. I mean, mm -hmm. that kind of depth, that kind of texture that you can't get from any kind of other lighting fixture um, really helps these kinds of events stand out. And a lot of times it is as simple as, do the first couple, get it in your portfolio, make sure that, and this, this drives home that point because this is the number one thing that I see people do wrong with trying to make money off their lasers. If it's been sitting on their shelf and they're not showing it to anybody, they're not gonna make any money off of it. You have to show it to your clients. If you don't have the space to show it to your clients, you don't have an office, you don't have a warehouse, you don't have a garage, See what you can do in order to partner with somebody in order to do that. See if you can get into a wedding show or a lot of these uh, venues have, you know, annual shows or semi-annual shows where they say, come on in, check out some of the options. See what you can do to get into these shows and demonstrate the product because once they see it, they want it. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay, let's go to the next one here. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, that's the same one we've talked about. Uh, Jay Funk Sanchez wants to talk about outdoor events. Again, safety questions we'll save for July 28th. But what's your favorite? I'm going to modify this question. This is what do you recommend for outdoors. And since it, the answer is always, it depends. What is your, let's say, go to laser for an outdoor event? And will a haze machine be required? I've always told people there's a reason why Disney uses fireworks because nothing puts as much smoke as a firecracker. But you know, for let's say an, an outdoor type show, what's one of your favorite lasers and how do you get haze out in the air in the middle of nowhere or outside? So my personal go-to, the one that I, I grab when I'm headed out the door because I like doing lasers for my friends and, and for parties and all that, is the HPX, uh, Skyrider HPX, which is two watts, or the Skyrider HPX Tor, which is five watts. Reason for this, um, they're very compact. They're well sealed, so they're easy to travel around. And if the rain starts coming down while I've got things set up, they're mm -hmm. not, you know, I'm not going to tell you that they're completely weatherproof, but Skyrider HPX sits on the roof of my house between October for Halloween and New Year's in Maryland. So it gets rain, snow, all that crap. Um, partly as a torture test to see what they can take, and also just because I like putting on a show on the house. So the, my go to is typically, you know, that two watt to five watt level because it's versatile. I can make that work outdoors. Two watts, a little tough outdoors for an aerial show. 
Five watts can do it. The key thing is you got to be careful with your programming. Um, in addition to all the normal outdoor caveats that I have to hit on, even though we're not talking about safety, don't shoot into unterminated space without getting FAA clearance. Make sure that you're keeping everything below 200 feet. Make sure all your zones are terminated. You're watching out for, for reflective surfaces, all that. Um, but if you're doing an outdoor show and you're trying to do aerial effects, then 5 watts is pretty much the floor. But you can make 5 watts look good if you're going with hot beam effects or a lot of folks like the liquid sky, but if you take a 5 watt liquid sky outdoors and spread it out you know, at full angle, it's not going to look that great the way because you're you're spreading that power out over a really wide area. Yeah. One of the tricks that you can do is do that liquid sky, but do it at half width, and then take that half width and swing that half width across your full scan angle. So you're still getting the full angle coverage that helps it feel like a really big show, but you're doubling your average power density, which makes the whole thing appear brighter than if you'd just done a full fan. Or These buy more lasers. lasers. Or, or buy more lasers. Yeah, that works too. Um, if you're doing outdoors, your best bet might not be to buy more lasers, but to buy more hazers. And that's one of the key things. Um, lasers are great at a lot of things, but it doesn't matter if you've got a 20-watt laser, a 200-watt laser. If there's nothing in the air to reflect or to refract the light off of, you're not going to see it. Uh, it, can, it can be dust from Burning Man. Playa sand works really well. By and large, uh, we don't recommend going with humidity, but if you're right off the Great Lakes in the summer, sometimes it works really well. Um, you know, rain works really well, but it's not a situation that a lot of people want to be out doing a laser show in. Haze, fog, smoke. If you've got really thick smoke or really thick fog, like just last night I did a uh, show in the neighborhood with a bunch of fireworks, and you get that really thick, dense smoke from the fireworks, we also bring a hazer because then you get to still see the beams and you get these two layers to it. You get the really, really thick stuff. And we did a uh, live stream last night that you can check out on our Facebook page where you can see the different differences here. But yeah. You can see the really, really ultra bright stuff right where the smoke is, but then you still see the beams where the haze is because it's important to fill that space out. If you're doing outdoors, two hazers are basically a minimum. You've got to compensate for wind direction. Um, doing, uh, as uh, Shane Martz, another, another laser guy uh, with uh, Dynamic Systems, um, he, he said just earlier today that outdoor hazing is an art. Um, and he's absolutely right about that. But if you're not an artist, put out a bunch of hazers. That's the old, if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot strategy. Hey, I it like works. it. I like um, it. <laughs> just get, you know, four corner coverage. So no matter which way the wind blows, you get good haze. That's key to having a good outdoor show. So um, let's t uh, last one, and then we're, we have a couple X laser specific questions. What training material would you? And when you get a chance on your other window, go ahead and open up Facebook. I just sent you the list of all the entries, and I'll kind of walk you through on how to pick the winner and all that. Um, actually, I'll send you the link for those of you guys that uh, are tuning or that uh, have seen this before. You know that he's basically going to copy and paste that list at random.org slash list. And then he will announce the winner. Uh, it is a U.S. only contest, not because they don't want to ship the laser out, but there are a lot of legal gremlins that do make things difficult. Uh, so that is, again, if you're out of the U.K. or out of the U.S. or whatnot, uh, he does have some alternatives for you, but we'll... We'll play that by ear. Um, okay, so real quick, somebody asked, uh, GS Lighting Solutions, uh, who's tuned to almost every live stream, so thank you for that. What training material would you suggest to learn how to introduce lasers into my show? Is there, I mean, other than going to a class, is, is there a book? Uh... Uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to tell you that there's a book, but there, there isn't really on this, on this matter. Um, the... The number one thing I would tell you is that it's it's a lot of his experience and a lot of his playing with it. It depends on what you're trying to do. And I hate that I keep going back to saying it depends. It depends. I'm not selling diapers. I'm selling solutions for lasers. But um, the key thing is if you're working with the software, if you're doing graphics, text, and things like that, it's important to a couple times before you take it out in public, grab a six-pack, hang out in the warehouse, just play with the laser, play with the software, 
get used to it. Um, get familiar with it so that you can work with it cleanly. If you've got the space, if you've got a warehouse or even a room, mm -hmm. even if it's a, a you know a dining room or something like that, set the lasers up, run some haze, and then experiment yourself with looking at it in different directions. Now, there are classes that are out there, but most of them focus on the safety aspect as opposed to the visual aspect and how to put on um, good laser shows and build good laser shows. We occasionally do clinics and seminars with some of our dealers um, with specific topics like, okay, here's how you do laser installs at nightclubs, that kind of thing, which is another great revenue source for those of you who occasionally do like, like nightclubs is, Hey, check these lasers out. Do you like them? Because we can put them in your space, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, so we do occasionally do clinics like that. If you have any questions, give us a call. But we're going to be focusing uh, over the next couple months with a video series that really does a lot of this training aspect. Because that's awesome. something that no one's, no one's really done yet. And as you can see from this, it's, there's a lot that goes into it that we want to make sure that people learn. Oh, of course. And, you know, one of the important things is that I think that's one of the reasons why you guys have recommended Pangolin and use Pangolin because they not only have their own videos, but they even have the online cloud depository where you can download other uh, graphics and stuff. So if you're not going to make graphics yet, almost every laser tutorial out there uses Pangolin software. So that is, I think, one of the reasons why X Laser uses Pangolin, that and just like X-Laser, they offer good support. So that's a winning combo. Now, two very specific X-Laser questions, um, Adam. Uh, what is the warranty on the lasers? <laughs> so that depends on the model. Um, okay. Basically, uh, what you're looking at for the Auroras, which are the, the Caliente Aurora and the Aurora 4C, Aurora 4G, you're looking at six months on the diodes and then a year on the rest. Um, everything else is at least one year, sometimes two, depending on the model. We're within the next couple months, we're looking at going ahead and pushing the uh, warranty on the Auroras to the full one year mark um, system bumper to bumper. Uh, but there are a couple small things we need to get in order. So that'll be probably about DJ Expo when that goes. Um, that's when we'll be okay. making that transition. And we'll talk about DJ Expo in just a moment, too. Um, so Omega wants to know uh, if they can buy from X Laser directly or can they go through a dealer? And uh, did you find to see if that code was active still? Uh, I believe that code is active, actually. And I would recommend that anyone who's checking out this stream um, go to uh, x-laserstore.com, get whatever you're looking for. And then if you use the code gear it first, you're going to get a uh, fairly decent discount. I don't recall if it's 10% or 15%, so I'll look that up now. No, you say what was the code again? The code was gear it first. Awesome. Is it case sensitive or no? How about instead of guessing, I'll look that up right now and give you the 100% uh, answer. Sorry about All that. All right. Awesome. So, okay, guys. So, yes, you can go to the website. As he said, go to X Laser Store. And, yes, please use the code. It helps me show them how many people are actually loyal to the streams. And, more importantly, it helps support people that do support you guys. So, one thing um, I'd like to say beyond that um, – if you folks have preferred lighting dealers that you work with, we've got a lot of big ones, IDJ Now, PSSL, Sound oh, yeah. Lighting Solutions, all kinds of great folks um, that offer very good prices and great customer service. Go through them, but do me a favor and email me, adam at x-laser.com, and if you tell me that you learned about us or decided to buy because of this, this stream, um, I'll go ahead and toss in a free t-shirt for you. So go ahead Ooh, and send me your uh, t-shirt size. And you'll get one of these very, very stylish, uh, you know, 80s retro T-shirts that's got a big old <laughs> yellow thing on the back that talks about how great lasers are. Awesome. We definitely appreciate that. Uh, Omega asks, if a diode does go bad, are they easily replaceable? They that's a dangerous not, question. That, that is a great question that uh, I don't have an answer that I'm happy with just because we're, we're sort of handcuffed by the law at some point. I'm a fix-it guy. I love tearing out my own parts. I, I ripped the clutch out of my Trans Am to replace that not too long ago. I love fixing things. Unfortunately, for legal compliance, um, and, and because the laser that comes out of the unit is not necessarily the same as the laser that's in the unit, um, for that those two reasons, diode replacements have to come back to our shop in Maryland. Um, okay. We don't have authorized repair shops across the country just because there is the legal compliance issue. 
th that being said, um, we will take good care of you. I mean, always. Yeah. Uh, I, I, actually, you. I, 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 I'm not gonna lie, I, guys. I'm a pain in the ass client no, to you're X Laser. Not. <laughs> you're great. Uh, and, and no, I mean, you you guys took care of me even on things that were completely out of your control. You know, with UPS pretending that it was a football. Uh, you guys have always taken great care of me. Um, so let's talk real quick about D, uh, DJ Expo. I know you're going to be there. Uh, can they pretty much pester you with all the other questions? I'm sure they're going to want in person. And what, you know, what products can they see? Is the Mirage going to be there? Is the Caliente going to be there? Because I know Mirage has been uh, a hot seller is an understatement. Yeah, that's that's absolutely the case. We're, we're cranking them out as quickly as we can. They're they're doing real well. Um, so the the Mobi Mirage is going to be there. All of the Auroras are going to be there. And we're also going to have the uh, Skyrider HPX Tour 5 for folks who want to see, you know, what a less than $1 per milliwatt 5-watt laser looks like. Um, it's very, very awesome. cost competitive. Um, if you need big power at a nice low price, then it's there. It's available. Um, so we're going to have all those, and we're going to have a, a couple of people there available to answer any and all questions. I'll be there for, I think, one or two days of it, not for the whole thing, I'm sorry to say. I love that show, but it's just right at a bad time with a whole bunch of other stuff. Always, um, always. Yeah, we'll have the staff there, and we're always happy to talk, just talk shop or BS about something else. Or if you've got questions, we're happy to talk about relevant things to the show as well. So the um, the engraving, is that still a thing? Can we talk about that for a second? Because well, if it's still a thing. Special thing for you. Oh, but, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll crop that out. You guys didn't hear that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Um, seriously, if you guys if you guys decide to purchase a laser through this stream, you have to send me an email first. You have to let me know where you bought the laser from and, and all your information and all that. But yeah, we'll do we'll do custom laser engraving within reason. Um, yeah. You know, we'll do a nice small logo that's yours, or if you want to just say property of blah blah blah, we're happy to do that. And it's it's laser etching. You can't you can't rub that off, man. <laughs> um, it's not it's not coming off. So we're happy to do that for folks who uh, end up going through this live stream. We got the laser etcher in the back, no big deal. Um, that being said, if it's something really complex, you know, you, you want a photograph of your dog that's eight feet, uh, eight inches by eight inches. I'm, I'm not going to do that for you, man. For yeah, no, it's, bucks, that's... It, but I'm not going to do that for free. But your logo, <laughs> or your your company or anything like that, we're happy to do that. You know, it's crazy because that was one of the big things with my lasers because people see, they're like, oh, is this an exclusive laser? Yeah. it's If you want this kind of show, you have to contact me. <laughs> uh, but at least, like you said, it doesn't roll off. No one's going to steal it. Um, and real quick, you have before you announce the winner, you have a shout out. Uh, Zambia says the Skyrider HPX 2 Watt is awesome. It changed their life. <laughs> well, that, thank you. I'm glad to hear that. If it changed your life, take some photos, put a review on our Facebook page or something like that, and then let me know about it. We'll send you some swag, man. I got stickers. I got shirts. I got all kinds of good stuff. Absolutely. And then, you know, for these guys that already have lasers, uh, the X Laser Store, I mean, you sell the, you sell quick show licenses, uh, correct? You yeah, have we do, we the do um, upgrades for beyond. We do quick show licenses, all that good stuff. And um, you also have the, uh, oh goodness, you have the Ilda Cables, which guys, you can never have too many Ilda Cables. Let <laughs> me tell you. Um, you know, again, we'll go into the safety thing later on, but, and you know, the technical stuff, but it may look like a printer cable. It is not a printer cable. And unlike audio cables that you shouldn't use for DMX, but you can in a pinch. When it comes to a cable that prote can protect your laser from shooting a beam straight down, probably not the best idea to go cheap correct <laughs> i mean i'm, I'm not going to tell you that i personally haven't gone out to fry's electronics and picked up a extension cable because i was in a hurry but you run the risk of spurious emissions and all kinds of weird issues that are problematic to track down and simply the cheap chinese cables from monoprice and things like that they break easily they break quickly um oh, absolutely i would absolutely recommend they're also all gray which i hate so uh, I would recommend, you know, getting, if you've got a laser and you're running ILDA cables, get get a decent set of ILDA cables with good shielding, good proper gauge wire, and they're black, so they look cool. 
That's awesome. And then somebody mentioned that uh, that they picked up actually uh, it was Zambia that they picked up their X laser in person. Is that an option to be able to go into your store, uh, buy lasers, but also get a chance to do a demo? Yeah, it's not something that we really encourage just because we're set up for manufacturing. We're not set up for retail. Of um, course. If you're in the area of, of, of Laurel, Maryland, I would highly recommend going to Washington Music Center, Chuck Levins. Yeah. Randy down there will take great care of you. He's a great guy. Um, and they've got, you know, a lot of good space down there. They're really good folks. If you want to come in here and uh, play with things, Send us an email first to schedule it because we often have uh, lighting designers in our demo room, you know, working with lasers and trying to get that experience. So give us some notice. Don't just show up and we can probably work something out. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So um, real quick, let's, uh, I, I just got your text. So basically xlaserstore.com uh, and the uh, code guys is geared first, one word. So I'm going to put that in there as well. And it's a generous 15% off. That's awesome. Thank you very much for that. I'm Wait, 15? I'm at one to five. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Crap, I did it again. <laughs> All right, so let's real quick, in a nutshell, well, because we talked about it earlier, but let's talk about the awesome prize. What do they get and why is it so cool? Because it, it really is a one of a kind of what it can do. <laughs> It's a laser. I mean, it's it's the Caliente Aurora. Pew, pew. It is it is a seven color laser. So you get red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and white. Um, it is it is one of those entry level lasers where it's designed specifically for very very simplistic programming. No Y axis, so it stays nice and safe overhead or all time. You don't need to baby it. Um, you just need to basically have your on off by DMX or you can do more complex programming if you want. You get your liquid skies, you get your hot beams, uh, really stands out. It's one of our most popular fixtures with nightclubs because they want the look of laser and they want it to be pretty great. Um, so that's, that's what the Caliente Aurora is. It's meant to be maximum impact at minimum price, but it's still a hell of a fixture to get for free. That's it. Yeah, no, it's, it, you know, that's one of the things actually I have a nightclub that is looking into that. They want hype, like a, a good, nice laser, but they don't want me to have to teach somebody else how to use another piece of software. They've already got four or five things to worry about. They want to do a DMX, but they've always worried about a traditional, you know, even a high power laser that can be controlled with uh quick show or beyond and DMX. And they're always worried that somebody's going to push the wrong button on the board and the laser is going to spray everywhere. So that is a that's a very cool concept. So what happens if the winner doesn't have a variance? What do they do? If the if the winner doesn't have a variance, that's not a problem. We'll take care of that for you. We're gonna go ahead and include the easy variance kit for free, just because Arnaldo is such a nice guy and his streams are <laughs> awesome. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take care of that for you. Make sure that you're nice and legal. Absolutely. You know, and real quick in the chat, people are just talking about you. Uh, somebody said how you went the extra mile and, you know, helped them out with a cable when they, you know, theirs had just gone out. Uh, people are talking about how uh, you've even stayed after office hours and helped them out, too. So, I mean, customer I service is out. your they thing. helped me out. I get to have a job where I do this kind <laughs> of stuff, playing with lasers. I mean, you, you folks are really the ones who have helped me out. Anything I can give back, I'm happy to do. I, that's the thing that I love most about this job is having these kinds of relationships where, I don't really have clients. I've got a just big pile of friends that I really enjoy working with. Absolutely. And I really appreciate you uh, being here today. It has been oh, it's a pleasure, man. It's been a blast. Uh, and I'm so glad we were able to get past the YouTube quirky issue. Um, so now let's let's tell the winner who they are. All right. The winner is Mark Woods. Mark Woods, congratulations. I need you to tell me you're in the chat because if you logged off, we got to go to the next person. <laughs> <laughs> That's only happened one time. Oh, somebody asked about the promo. How, how long is that 15% uh, good for right now? You need to get your credit card out right now. No. Um, how long is that promo good for? I'm going to leave that up through the rest of your big gear at first giveaway streams. Awesome. So once, once those are over, the code dies. Um, so act fairly promptly. So guys, get to it. Um, so Mark Woods, if you are there, 
uh, please let us know. Oh, Nathan said that he's worked with you in person and always great uh, personal service. Thanks, Jim Nathan. says, thank you for the information. Uh, there was great information tonight. Uh, somebody else, RLG222, says that if they don't win, they will definitely need to buy it. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, honestly, it, it's, it's a great laser. If you don't want to have to worry too much on the... You know, okay, because the up and down is really the scary part. It is. The side to side, you're much better on it. And it's, it's a great laser to get started with. Um, In so the event that the winner decides that they want to move up to another one, I'll give them the full credit towards that oh, uh, wow. cost of the unit towards something else. All right, and he is there. Mark, if you could do me a favor, I'm actually going to real quick put my uh, Facebook. And all of you guys, please feel free to add me on Facebook. Um, but do me a favor. Just go ahead and send me a message on Facebook. Adam, I'll copy you in and get you guys connected. Uh, so, Mark, I hope you're based in the U.S., though. If you're not, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. For those of you guys that are tuned, uh, tuned in real quick, don't go anywhere because we do have on July 28th, we're going to do technically a part two with Penguin talking about the safety part of it. Uh, and they are definitely qualified to talk about laser safety. <laughs> you, you guys will see why. Um I, th I think the best way to describe Bill is, I mean, he's a Steve Waz when it comes to lasers. Like, this guy has more patents than I have cats. I, th I think he's in lot. the 30s now. Is he really? Yeah, not just, like, I know he's got it in the U.S. And, and China. And from what I understand, it is not easy to pull a patent in China. Yeah, Bill is, what Bill is one of the smartest guys I've ever had the pleasure of working with. I, I think you folks are in for a real treat. I would absolutely recommend checking that out. <laughs> Real quick, they're like, Mark isn't here. Let's go. He just <laughs> replied. <laughs> I'm, I'm Mark um, now. I'm Mark now. That's what people Yeah, right. Say. <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah, hi, I'm Mark. I, <laughs> I just legally so, changed my name in the last five minutes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, guys, real quick. Tomorrow, I have a live stream that may get pushed if I cannot figure this thing out with YouTube. Um, I will see if I can find... Somebody else that I can kind of feed through what John Young is doing. Because uh, that would be what's going to have to happen until we can blast it. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but we'll figure it out. Anyhow, guys, geartfirst.com slash giveaway. You can see the full schedule. It is up right now. I am super stoked. Um, Adam, anything else you would like to tell our beautiful audience? You've all been great. It's a real pleasure. Thanks so much for letting me do this here today. Uh, if anyone's going to the Christmas Expo in Nashville next week uh, mm -hmm. or is in the Nashville area and has any interest in coming and checking us out, we've got a booth there where we're going to be showing a lot of graphics work. Um, so if you wanted to have the chance to play with one of these Mirages in person and do some of the graphics work, if you're in the Nashville area, there's that. Same deal if you're going to be around for DJ Expo in August. Uh, and then we're also going to be at LDI with some whole new stuff. So if you're coming to any of those shows, please come by and say hi. I'd love to meet you. Absolutely. And then real quick, before you tune out, do me a favor. Show some love to X Laser. Go to YouTube. Or <laughs> on YouTube. Uh, but open up another window and search or just go to youtube.com slash X Lasers. Uh, no dash and make sure it's plural. Uh, find X Laser with the dash on. Actually, no, it's X Laser USA without the dash on Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yep. Uh, X Laser USA on Instagram. And then also find them on Facebook. Give them some love and just post in there how X Laser changed your life. Again, guys, I'm Arnaldo with Gear It First here with Adam from X Laser. Adam, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I know you're insanely busy with everything you've got going on, but I do appreciate being able to show us some love. It's been a blast. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, guys. And we're going to head out, click, and the stream.